Hello, and welcome to another episode of Salt Air. This is the 22nd installment of Salt Air, and I'm excited to be able to talk to you about uh, the new 2015.2 release of Salt. This is, of course, a major feature release of Salt. Um, unlike many releases of Salt in the past, we've actually pushed this one out quicker than the last release. So it doesn't have anywhere near as many uh, bells and whistles, but it is still an impressive release and we've got some very, very exciting features that I'm excited to talk about. So we're going to talk a little bit first about beacons. Now the beacon system, uh, which is brand new to 2015.2, uh, allows you to actively watch anything that's going on on your system and then translate those actions into SALT events. And so it makes it easy to now be able to say, configure that you want to watch a specific file or directory. And then if that file or directory changes, then what happens is that the beacon picks up that change, translates the information of that change into an event, and then sends that event on forward up to the salt master to be fired on the salt master's event bus and on the minions event bus making it easy to be able to build a reactor that is actively actively listening to file changes so that those changes can happen immediately or they can cause a reaction that happens immediately down in your infrastructure now another beacon that i want to mention is uh, the WTMP beacon, which watches the WTMP system in Unix. For those of you who are unfamiliar with what this system is, it tracks logins. So every time someone logs into a minion, if this beacon is, in, is enabled, then you'll get an event specifying that someone logged in. The new shell beacon also allows us to have an event fire every time someone executes a command inside of a terminal on a minion, meaning that you can have a continuous event stream of every human interaction which is occurring on one of those servers. Now, the next thing that I wanna talk about is SALT SSH. Now, in 2014.7, we made major enhancements to SALT SSH overhauled it in a big way and made it smoother, faster, and more reliable. These enhancements are again applicable to the 2015.2 release. SALT SSH has a lot more to it than it did before. And so what we're looking at is primarily that we now support the SALT mine, the SALT publish, so the peer system inside of SALT, as well as many more features of the state system. This enables you to now reliably take SLS files that you've been executing or have been written for uh, normal salt and fills in those last gaps that we were missing. So that if you have mine to, uh, or to manage large scale orchestrations, if you have peer routines, SALT SSH can now ingest them and function using those same advanced event-driven topologies that allow you to create high-speed, reliable orchestration and uh, control systems. So again, very, very excited about the new advances in SALT SSH. Of course, we have added many stability features and many more pieces of functionality around um, SALT SSH. One more thing I wanted to mention with SALT SSH is that we've streamlined also its ability to send out um, its thin tarball. So how SALT SSH works, of course, is that it packages up all of the Python dependencies as well as SALT itself and shoots it down to the remote system so that it can run in an isolated fashion without you having to have dependencies on that system already. Now, we ran into a number of hiccups with respect to some systems not translating those dependencies in a really smooth way. But all of that has been taken care of. The dependencies that weren't working well have either been fixed or they've been removed from SALT altogether. And so we're very excited again about the fact that SALT SSH has, has and continues to improve. Now, one feature that people have been asking for for a long time is to be able to run the minion as an un um, as an unprivileged user, but 
to still be able to access root via uh, sudo. And so we now have the new functionality in 2015.2 to run the sudo user as a minion option, allowing you to start the minion up as, say, a user called salt, and then control the access that the minion has to run root commands entirely through sudo. Now this makes it much easier to make sure that your daemon doesn't have to run as root, which can uh, get you past more of these security issues and make it a lot easier to streamline deployment. Now again, most deployments that we see don't have this requirement, uh, but it is now an option that we're very pleased to be able to present. Now, the next thing that I want to talk about is what we've done with respect to getting Python 3 support into SALT. Now, as you can imagine, SALT is an extremely large code base. Uh, we're well over 200,000 lines of code now, and, it's, and SALT's actively being contributed to by more people than ever. We're well above 1,000 contributors. Uh, last I checked, we were just scraping 1,400. And so, um, adding Python, Python 3 support has been a little more cumbersome than we'd originally hoped. But we now have all of the tests and checks in place, which means that when you execute something via Python, uh, or when you commit some code, we're able to check and see if it's going to be Python 3 compatible. Now, right now, we only have the ability to install on Python 3. We don't yet have our test system migrated over to Python 3. And so the end result there is that we're hoping for the next release of SALT, which we're targeting for uh, June or July, to be able to run at least SALT SSH and SALT rate using Python 3. And so we've still got a few things to finish up there, but the, but the work forward has been moved, moving very, very, very smoothly. Now, um, for those of you who came to SALTConf, uh, you got to hear us talk a lot about SALT Enterprise, and I was able to talk a lot about the relationship between SALT and SALT Enterprise. And so I want to talk a little bit more about that right now. Many of the, many of the features and enhancements that we put into the 2015.2 release, many of which I haven't highlighted because there's a whole swath of tiny additions as well as uh, module enhancements and improvements and additions uh, that there are far too many to highlight all of them together. But the vast majority of what we've done as a company has been releasing things in the open that help support our efforts on the enterprise. Many of the beacons which have been developed and many of the things that inspired the beacon system come from our drive to develop very specific features and functionality inside of SaltStack Enterprise's GUI. And so I'm very happy that we're able to continue to work on this model of having bi-directional development between open source software and enterprise software so that they can feed into each other, that they can benefit each other. Another one of the very major uh, benefits that we have with respect to the inclusion of SALT Enterprise in the mix is that we've been able to take the entire platform through a substantially higher and more aggressive QA process where our tests are much more closely monitored and we've been able to keep our tests running op uh, optimally for a very long time, which means that our QA and our checks and our validation before we push a release out has come light years with respect to its capabilities, especially, with, especially in contrast to how we were sending releases out only a year ago. So I'm much more confident in being able to put 2015.2 out than I was in, say, when we released the 0.17 release of SALT. A substantially higher amount of testing and QA has gone into it, and we're, again, very proud, very excited about what we're doing with SALT SSH. Now, the last thing that I want to say is that the videos from SALTConf are being made available you can see them by going to saltstack.com slash saltconf15 video. Um, the majority of them are up on YouTube, 
and there's more describing how to get access to all of those videos um, up on that page. And so if you missed SolConf, you can still go back and get a lot of the content that, uh, that was pushed, a lot of the talks that were given, and really deepen your knowledge of how incredibly vast Salt's own functionality is. All right. Thank you all for watching. Uh, looking forward to having another Salt Air very soon without quite the same lag that we had since the last time um, we did a Salt Air. And also looking forward to having more videos and more instructions and great improvements coming your way from SaltStack. Thank you.